As the story begins, we see a man named David driving a car. There was snow all over the city, and in this snowstorm, the government banned everyone from going out on the road. Anyway, David now stops at a restaurant owned by Anna. Anna's hotel is also not very rushy, because in this storm, many people avoid going out of the house. That's why the hotel staff was also on leave. Anna was also going to leave, but she stopped after seeing David. She brings David's order, and in the meantime, we notice that she is very nervous. She is getting calls from someone again and again. Suddenly, her eyes go out of the window. A car had stopped there, seeing which Anna was even more scared. That is, the caller had now reached here. As soon as this man enters the hotel, he starts forcing Anna, because he wants to meet his daughter, and Anna is his ex-wife. This man was a drug addict, so the court banned him from meeting his daughter. Now, before this man beats Anna, or misbehaves with her, David, who was sitting behind, tells this man to stop. His action increases Anna's husband's anger. In anger, he reaches David to fight with David, but David was very calm, who tells him that you have only two options. Either you fight with me and go to jail, or you go home comfortably, prepare to quit your addiction, and then take your daughter back from the judge. This husband was afraid of David calling the police, so he quietly left from there. And his departure had relaxed Anna. All this happened because of David. David's wisdom handled this situation easily. And because of this, Anna could not resist herself without being impressed with David. Here she sits and talks to David. Then she finds out that David is married. Anna's ex-husband had now broken David's car mirror while leaving, but David remains silent for him too. He sticks to his side mirror with tape and moves forward on his way. The storm was very fast. It was raining. It was already difficult to move forward, and David's car's fuel was also over. So on the way, David stops to fill fuel. And in the meantime, Anna's ex-husband passes through here. He was already angry at David. He wanted to vent all his anger on David here. But before he could complete his plan, a police car stops at this fuel station. As soon as David gets the fuel, he moves forward. Anna's ex-husband was now constantly chasing his car, and David had noticed this. David knew that this was the same man he had messed with in the hotel, and now, without getting him hurt, he will not go. To save himself, he starts driving fast. After coming a long way from that man, David puts his car on the side of the road and turns it off, so that in the darkness of the night, that man does not see David's car. His plan had also worked. That man passes by David's car, but he does not see the car. David was afraid that that man would start chasing him again. To hide from him, he goes to a small road outside the jungle. This road was very slippery. It was a deserted area. David could not see much. And because of this slipperiness, David's car gets into an accident. The car slips and falls to the side. David tried a lot to get his car back on the road, but the car tires were getting stuck in the snow. Helplessly, he gets out of the car and tries to remove the snow with the help of his hands. But in the cold of the snow, his hands were injured. He thought that his hands would break. Helplessly, he now sits in the car, turns on the heater of his car, and starts to heat up his hands. David had understood that it was impossible for him to get out of here. Until someone came for help, he did not even have a signal in his mobile that he could call the police. I mean, I don't know when help would come, because the government had forbidden people to leave on the roads, and this was already a very deserted road. Thinking about this, he also turned off the battery of his car. He now puts a cigarette here and sleeps while drinking it. In the morning, his eyes saw the sound of an animal growling. A wild animal was around him. In his fear, David does not even get out of his car. At that time, he had nothing to eat and drink. That's why he also stores his urine. David also thinks that if the car stays here, the snow will cover the car completely. Then, no one will be able to see this car, and it will be even more difficult for him to get out of here. That's why he now gets out of the car. Looking around the binoculars, he could see smoke somewhere far away. So there must be people living there. In this hope, he gets out of the car. Maybe he can get some help there. Before going there, he opens the trunk of his car. And in the trunk of his car, we see Anna tied up. David, whom we thought was a good person, was a kidnapper who kidnapped Anna. Before leaving the car, he warns Anna not to even try to get out of the car. But why did Anna listen to her kidnapper? As soon as he leaves, she starts trying. And her hands and mouth, which were tied up, she also succeeds in opening them. Now, she also wanted to get out of this car. But the back side of the car could not be opened from the inside. That's why, by removing the back speakers of the car, she succeeds in getting into the car. 
As soon as she enters the car, she opens the door of the car and runs out. But it was very cold outside. And when she does not see a human being far away, she feels better to go back to the car. Although at least she could have avoided the cold. Her hands and feet were open. She was now able to compete with David. That's why Anna goes back to the car and sits down. Because the cold has increased a lot. And on the other hand, now we see David. He had come a long way from the car to reach the smoke place. And now his leg was also stuck in a pit and broken. His condition was very bad. A lot of blood was coming out of his legs. He could not want to get up. But he has to be brave. Because if he had been lying in the snow for a while, he would have died. David decides to come back to the car while crawling. Where Anna was now looking for things to save her from the car. But she does not get anything here except tape and chloroform. That's why she keeps both of these things with her. We see that David had also come to the car. He opens the door of the car and sits inside the car. After cutting his pants and seeing his wound, his condition also deteriorated. His leg bone was so badly broken that it came out while crossing the flesh. He was screaming very badly in pain. He tied a big wire to his leg so that there was no more bleeding. To reduce his pain a little, as soon as he turns on the heater here, he finds out that there's someone has messed up with his car. He understood that there could be no one here except Anna. Before he picks up his knife and hits Anna on the back, Anna suddenly makes him unconscious by smelling chloroform. Unconsciously, he had a dream, where he is in the snowy forest right now. In front of him is a dead animal, and there is blood on both his hands. As soon as he sees this dream, he gets scared and wakes up. When he comes to his senses, he sees that Anna tied his hands with a string and tied his neck with a seat. Anna asks him, where did you bring me here? And where is my phone? David replies that I threw your phone, and I don't even know where we are at this time, because I got lost. Anna says to him, whatever it is, my mom must have called the police by now. But David says, it must not have happened, because before throwing your phone, I had messaged your mom that you are with your ex-husband. And Anna was shocked to hear this. Anna now takes his wallet and phone, but there were no signals on his phone. Here, David tells her, no doubt I am in your captivity, but till now we are both in trouble, and we both have only one car source to stay alive, so we should take care of it. Anna, listening to him, turns off the car heater so that the car's battery does not run out. After this, she checks David's wallet, where there were a lot of fake IDs, which clearly meant that David is a fraud man, and he never stays in one place. Anna was very tired, and she felt sleepy. So she picks up the children's seat in David's car, and throws it out of the car, so that she can sleep here comfortably. But how could she sleep comfortably when David was there? So before going to sleep, she had also made David unconscious by smelling him with chloroform. This time too, in a state of unconsciousness, David sees the same dream that he had seen before. There was a dead animal in the snowy place, whose blood was on David's hands. Afraid, this time too, David comes to his senses. But as soon as he comes to his senses, he sees that Anna had already woken up. And as soon as she wakes up, Anna needed to go to the washroom, so she gets out of the car. And taking advantage of this opportunity, David locks his car completely so that Anna gets stuck outside. Anna was very angry with his behavior. She was quite angry. If she wanted to stay alive, she could have stayed inside the car. So now the baby seat that she had thrown out of the car earlier, with the help of which she breaks the car window and comes inside the car. Due to the breaking of the window, the temperature of the car had also dropped a lot. At that time, she tries to kill David with the help of the seatbelt. And before David dies, Anna's mind stops her from doing this. The constant cold from the broken window could kill them, so Anna closes all the windows with tape. After all this, Anna checks David's phone. She found a lot of her and her family's photos in David's phone, which made it clear that David had not suddenly come to her hotel and kidnapped her. Rather, he had been planning to kidnap her for a long time. Now she checks his car, where she finds the IDs of many girls. And with this, she also finds out that Anna is not the first girl David has kidnapped. Rather, he has already killed many girls by kidnapping them. He is a serial killer. Anna asks David while shouting, How do you kill so many girls? And how many girls have you killed so far? In response, David says, I don't remember. Here, he starts telling Anna the story of his first killing. First of all, he had planned to kill the girl by making her a fool. He made himself noble. He put a ring in his hand, which made him look married. And he kept a child's seat on the back of his car, which made him feel that he was a family man. 
and he can't get involved in any such work. After driving the car for hours, he met a girl who needed a lift. David says, I made her sit in the car. At first, everything was going on normally. She was frank with me. But gradually, my words started scaring her. She was about to call the police. But before that, I caught her and killed her with a knife. David says, It was my first murder. And after that, I committed uncountable murders, some of which I don't even remember yet. His words were scaring Anna. That's why Anna puts tape on his face. David falls asleep, and Anna tries to sleep here. But suddenly, someone attacks their car. They thought it was a wild animal. But when the creature hits the front mirror of their car, then they find out that the creature is a human, or like a human. Before the creature breaks their car and kills them, Anna starts the car quickly. And many times, by honking the car, she succeeds in getting him out of there. David was considering Anna responsible for getting to this creature. But Anna reminds him that because of his blood lying outside in the snow, the creature came here. David's wound was now completely black. He had very little time. It was also possible that he would have died here. Anna tells David about this creature and says, This creature was not a human. It was a spirit. It was a ghost. The people living here believe that this creature kills the bad people who come here. And before killing his prey, he comes in his dreams and scares him. Hearing this, David was completely scared because he also saw a creature in his dreams many times. During these talks, their car's battery also runs out. As a result, the heater turns off. Now they were in such a bad condition that they had to come close to each other so that they could stay alive from each other's body heat. David felt that he was going to die here now. That's why he tells Anna his story, that why he started these murders. When he was young, his mother was very cruel to him, and that's why he became so cruel. Actually, he killed his mom first, and now, by killing these girls, he felt strong. But the real thing was that he was scared of these girls. Anna also tells her sad story here, that when she was young, her dad didn't treat her well. For years, she endured all this. And one day, she told her mom everything. After that, her dad was jailed. Anna thought that David had mercy in his heart while dying. That's why he is behaving well with Anna. But by doing all this, he was only making Anna a fool. Putting Anna in his talks, he released his hands and feet. And before Anna could understand anything, he tried to kill Anna by strangling her. Now Anna was not completely dead. Suddenly, someone opens the door of the car. The same spirit coming in from outside was the same creature, whose story Anna had told to David. It was going to take Anna with her. But Anna takes off her jacket to save herself, which was held by the creature. Such creatures gets David. After taking David from here, Anna quickly locks her car, and the creature couldn't come here again to find her. That's why she hides in the trunk of the car. She didn't even wear any thick clothes. Maybe this cold would have killed her now, but she was lucky. This snowstorm stops, and as soon as the snowstorm stops, the ice-removing cars come here, the driver of which also sees this car. And as soon as he comes to this car, he sees the dead David's organs here. After checking the car well, he did not find anyone in the car. But then when he opens the trunk of the car, there was Anna. Because of the cold, her condition was very bad but she was still alive, which will be rescued now. Her life will be saved. And showing this, this film ends here.